today I'm in Sirencester and I'm visiting Codex Books which may be the only new bookshop in the UK that focuses exclusively on science fiction and fantasy with a possible exception of Forbidden Planet which to me is a different kind of thing really.
Well, it's a few days after my visit to Codex Books in Sirencester. Hope you enjoyed that. Please leave some comments below for Jason at Codex to see. And if you're going to be critical, please be constructive because it is a work in progress. It's a very brave thing to do. If you know of any other dedicated SF bookshops in the UK, and I'm talking about bookshops that focus on new books rather than second hand, which is hold and ball game, I'd like to know. And do support Jason if you can, because he's making a real effort. And you know, he's a long way to go yet, I think. And it's difficult in a small market town where footfall is limited. And it's a beautiful town, so do visit Sirencester. It's a lovely town. There's some great pubs and things, as you saw. And it's a nice, you know, it's a nice sort of day or morning or afternoon out. So do go there and drop in and see him and try and buy something from him because, you know, he really is making an effort and we need this sort of thing to come back. It's a lot harder now than it used to be because of the internet, believe you me. So I really take my heart off to him. Well done, Jason. So I thought we'd pad this out a bit with a collected diary supplement because the last one was only 28 minutes long and I normally do about 40 minutes an hour and I've acquired quite a lot in the last few days. Um, forgive my appearance because yesterday I was in London um, at the multi-author signing for reports on the deep end just there, the Ballard Tribute Anthology and I'll tell you about that when the video for that comes up. That'll probably be in about, let me see, a week to 10 days, so sort of late November. Um, I am absolutely exhausted and struggling to keep up with the schedule because of my polymyalgia, but I'm doing what I can. But you'll see a lot of footage from that day coming up anyway. So what have I acquired recently? Well, just to sort of put some more of this in context, then there'll be another couple of sequences after this, which I will pre-shot, which will go in at the end because that's a neat way of doing it. So this is just stuff I picked up. We're talking about Forbidden Planet. I was there yesterday, as I say, and... You know, it's the biggest Forbidden Planet in the UK. I'm not that impressed with the range of books. But of course, because they have a lot of American books, you do see A formats. And I just could not resist this. Jules Verne, of course, from the Earth to the Moon, which of course I have in another format. But that's just beautiful. And that's a little A format paperback. And it's a banter. I mean, it's got a fantastic introduction by Gregory Benford, which I absolutely loved. And, you know, it made me think I haven't read any Benford for years. I do have some I haven't read. So I must get those under my belt, but great, great stuff. And I'm really looking forward to rereading this because this is a cracker. This is one of my favorite Verne's. My favorite is probably 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Um, no, is it? No, I would say my favorite is almost certainly Journey to the Center of the Earth, really. Um, and this one was a firm favorite in my childhood. So I'm looking forward to going back to that. So it'd be great. I also picked up this, a collaboration between Jack McDevitt and Mike Resnick and the Cassandra Project. And this is from about, let me see, 2004, something like that. Let's just have a look. Um, let's see. 2012. And I really enjoyed the Hercules text. And I hadn't read McDevitt for a while. So I bought this up as a collab. I thought that'd be interesting. And it's also dedicated to Barry N. Malzberg. And it's about the return of the space program after decades of public disinterest, which is probably why it's dedicated to Malzberg because of the Apollo books which he did back then which were very critical of what it was being used for politically so yeah looking forward to that and what else have I got this is a freebie I got from work this is a little series that Penguin are doing of tiny little chat books um, there are four of them sort of ghost stories for Christmas isn't that nice and the illustrations are by Seth the Canadian comic artist whose work I really like he does the Tales from the Radium Age series, the new version. There was a version about eight or nine years ago. There's a now much sort of bigger series. I've been showing them on the channel. And yeah, and this is by Bernard Cape, so I've not read before, I'm aware of. And there are three others by Edith Wharton, um, Mrs. Oliphant, and there's one by Arthur Conan Doyle. I'll definitely buy the Doyle because I'm a big Doyle fan, so there you go. And these come in, they're quite expensive. This is $6.99, which I think is really ridiculously pricey. Um, you know, that could be a four ninety nine book and they'd still make money, but there you go. So I got that as well. So I got that free. 
Now, when I was in work the other day, I got a care package from the very wonderful Chris Skillings over in the US of A. Hi, Chris. Chris and I always email him back and forth, and um, he's quite a character. Luckily, I'm quite a character as well. And he has sent me um, books, several books, over the sort of sort of lifetime of the child. He's exceptionally kind guy. So thanks a lot, Chris. You're really sort of spoiling me, and you really shouldn't. You should look after yourself and think about your own collecting. But he's a, he's an expansive, generous person, as so many of you are. So what did he send me? Well, Chris is obsessed with cyberpunk. And there are worse things to be obsessed with. And he sent me this, Black Glass by John Shirley, the lost cyberpunk novel, which is a project that Shirley and Gibson were talking about and working on way, way back early 80s never came to fruition and surely eventually got around to um to writing i've never read it and um so i'm looking forward to that because i am a big shirley fan he of course was the man who put the punk into cyberpunk and yeah great stuff and john and i have had a few sort of contacts we've never met he did write a little um blad for the back of one of my books which was really nice of him so yeah so that's great thanks for that chris trade paperback as you see he also sent me three very, very handsome hardcover books, which I just, you know, it's, I'm just overwhelmed by the generosity. It's so nice to get these things. And something he sent me was Greenhouse Summer by Norman Spinrad, Tor US hardcover first. I recently acquired a decent UK paperback of this, which wasn't cheap. It was about 12, 13 quid. So I'm gonna be selling that on. And this is Greenhouse Summer. This is a turn of the century novel from Norman, and it is signed. And I've not read this one, and I have other things signed by Norman from when I met him a long time ago, but I'm really, really pleased with that. And this is a sort of global warming, you know, business corruption type thing. The sort of Norman that was always doing that he rails against, you know, big business and corporations and the sort of horrible rich people who have all the wealth in the world and are destroying it. So, you know, that's that's very much Norman's jam. So that's that. So I'm really, really pleased with that. So that's that's a real sort of high point for the collection. It's just marvellous. <clears throat> what else do we have? Then another book that I quite fancy never going to getting, and it was a limited edition, and this is Gothic High Tech by Bruce Sterling, and who, as you know, is another of the guys who put the punk in cyberpunk, and this is from Subterranean Press. And this is absolutely gorgeous. I'm just gonna take the jacket off. And it's got, look at that, shiny leather boards there, and it's got red embossing on the spine, and it's got this very interesting pattern embossing on the end papers as well which is marvellous it's almost like a um, honeycomb effect really interesting if you can see it there and this is signed and numbered and this is let me see number 182 of 200 so that's great and that's when subterranean we're doing really good stuff i'm not a massive fan of subterranean these days i think they just do all these you know reprints of fancy novels that you know the slow people didn't catch the first time around you know and they're just cashing in on that they're not really collectible books at all um but you know at least i guess they're getting things out there in hardcover so that's absolutely fantastic so some real good american skiffy there then a example of british sf by an author i once did an informal signing with this would have been in the late 90s and that's michael marshall smith who's very very nice um, this was his first book, Only Forward, and Only Forward in the UK was originally a little A-format paperback, and it was very thick, and Pan published it, and they tried to make it look like The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and it didn't really come off. His later books did better. Spares is probably the best-selling one. He writes crime novels as Michael Marshall, and heck of a nice chap, and I've read some of his stuff, and this is the subterranean limited edition of Only Forward from around about 2002, I think. And it's got a much nicer jacket. It's got full cloth. Oh, it's just lovely. It just feels so nice. And again, decorated end papers. And we have, this is number 309 of 750. There you go. And that's signed there. And absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, um, I've never read this actually. I think I read some of the, I had like a proof for an advanced copy and I read some of it. But it was during the period where I wasn't really reading a lot of SF and I wasn't very open-minded about things. And I later read some of this stuff and enjoyed it. So yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go back and read that. And this is considered a bit of a sort of minor classic, really. So it's a real cult book. A lot of people really like this. So, and he's a heck of a nice guy, as I say, so I must read that. So thanks again, Chris. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. Very, very nice of you to send me those things. You really shouldn't. What else have we got? Well, recently, as you know, 
there's been a bit of a golden age thing going on here. And I've been chatting a lot with my mate Matt Defoe at Science Fiction Reads, who's been discovering Lee Brackett and C.L. Moore. And I've been saying to him, oh, you're into Brackett, wait till you get into Moore. I think so it's got me looking back at those people as well. And I recently acquired this. This is the Planet Stories edition of The Hounds of Scaith, one of the John Stark books. This is the second one I seem to remember after Ginger Star. And you can't pick these up secondhand in a format. But these Planet Stories, and this was still new, this is on Amazon, you can still get it. There's one or two of them still out there. And I didn't buy many at the time, I wish I had, because they're rather lovely. And I don't generally like trade paperbacks, but sometimes I would like a spiffing new book as opposed to a really, really ratty old A format paperback with a broken spine and that. So it's rather nice. So Planetary Romance Writ Large from Lee. And she wrote crime novels as well. And I just wish I did have some, I got rid of them. What a bird, like hen's teeth now, of course. So I must try and pick some of those up, even though I'm not really reading crime anymore. And I get the feeling that I may never go back to it, but you know, that might change when I retire. So really nice. So that's still out there and that was very cheap. That was about five quid on Amazon UK. So there you go, why not? There's no excuse. Also, brand new, um, it may not even be published yet. Um, I think it was probably published last week, but the time you see this, that this will be about Let's see, a Sunday now, you'll probably see this midweek. This is the new book by Adam Roberts, The Death of Sir Martin Malprelate, which is a Victorian Gothic crime novel, as far as I can see. 1848, the year of revolution. And of course, Adam knows all about these things. And it's a trade paperback original from Datura. Now, I've no idea who Datura are. I haven't looked them up yet because Datura is a plant, Jimson weed which contains the psychoactive ingredient DMT, dimethyltryptamine, which is like LSD, except if you take it, you disassociate in about 30 seconds to a minute. So don't, okay? Um, and um, I buy all of Adam's books as they come out routinely. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what that is. So that goes on the TBR pile. I'll probably, again, I say I'm not reading crime, but because it's Adam will make the exception. And I'm interested to see what he does. I think there are historical characters in this. I don't think it's a steampunk novel because I think if it was, I think Golangs would have published it. This is one of his little side projects. Something else I picked up recently, which is an old book. It's in all the reference books. I have read a bit of it once. There used to be a souvenir press edition, but I've been rather slack, shall we say, in collecting this person. And his work's coming back into print because Golangs have done something and he's got a new book out. And that's Peter S. Beagle. And this is a fine and private place. And that's a recent Golangs reissue, which is a ghost story, rather sort of fabulous and romantic. Um, I suspect it may be a little bit too soft and sentimental for me, but he does write really well. He's most famous for a book called The Last Unicorn, which is Patrick Rothfuss's favourite book. And I've been selling it for years by saying to people, this is Patrick Rothfuss's favourite book, even though it's quite different to Patrick Rothfuss. And, you know, that's a good thing because it's, it's nice to see a famous author, famous for one type of book, promoting something else, which is good. So, yeah, so I got that. So it's rather nice, rather nice edition. And it's got an introduction by Neil Gaiman, but don't let that put you off. And uh, I mean, Neil's got great taste. I mean, I always have a go at him. He's got really good taste. I'm not fussed on his own writing. He's a bit too YA, a bit too sentimental Gothic for me, but um, he does have great taste. So there you go, Peter S. Beagle. And you can get The Last Unicorn if you're a serious fantasy reader, you really should get out there and read it. It's really important. For many years, I was importing it to sell it and it wasn't in print in the UK, but now it and its sequels are coming back, which is really good news. What else do we have? Well, Nesfa, you know, looms large. And I think in the last um, Collected Diary, which is only a little while ago, I showed you the William Ten um, thing. And I probably showed you a Frederick Brown as well. Or that might be later in this video. You see, I'm like Scott Bradfield. I've got no idea what's going on or what I'm doing. So except Scott does, because he's a very clever writer and I'm a very unclever writer. But anyway, I got this, Martians and Madness, the complete SF novels of Frederick Brown fantastic from Nessa because with Frederick Brown a lot of his stuff is out of print I mean it's not too hard to find what Mad Universe and Martians go home because they were in print in the UK as recently he said laughingly as the 1980s but the other ones are uncommon and these Nessa books are great and I just know that even if I don't read them for a while in my retirement I know I keep mentioning that today <laughs> because I really wish I could retire now I'm absolutely shattered after being in London yesterday with a load of Ballardians in the pub that's what it is, you're thinking. He's hungover, only mildly. 
Um, so I can just see me sitting down in retirement reading this cover to cover. Frederick Brown, um, he wrote a lot of short stories. He wrote Arena, which was um, filmed, adapted for Star Trek. It's the one where Kirk goes up against the Gorn, who's the guy with the dinosaur's head. Brilliant. I know I've mentioned this again recently. And these, these are his novels, which tend towards the funny. And it's got an introduction by William Tenn. And he also wrote really good crime novels. There's one called His Name Was Death, which is fantastic. It's really noir -y. It's about this mysterious, vengeful killer. And again, I used to have it and got rid of it. And it goes, no. Um, his novel, The Fabulous Clip Joint, was his first crime novel. And that's really rated. And he's one of the few people who is deemed to be as good at writing crime fiction as he is at SF. So this is satirical, sharp biting funny silly stuff um really really good so that's lovely so i do love nets for, and i would like a lot more of this stuff the only problem is getting it now this came from amazon and it's slightly dinged in the top corner and like the other nets the things i got recently because of course they just bung it in a box no packaging you know it's got to come all the way across the atlantic in a plane come on guys get with the program we're going to finish up this segment there will be another after this with something i bought purely because it's such a nice book it's not particularly a book I'm fond of, but I saw it, I was in work, I do get a discount in work as I've said, and this is the new Golanx edition of Dune Messiah in hardcover, very nice, and this one has a sprayed edge there, yeah, very much so, and at the top, and it's also got a little picture on it, you see that's the Treaties there on Dune, you've got the, the moons in the sky, isn't that lovely? So I thought I'll have that because it's just nice, and it's got let me see it's nice red boards um, decorated end papers and who knows i may even read it again one day i've got pristine nel originals of course but there you go so that's the inside that's out there now this is an exclusive i'm not going to tell you who it's from you can work that out for yourselves there you go so i guess that's the end of this bit but there's another bit to follow anyway i'm going to stop now because i'm wrecked as i say i'll see you soon but do watch the next bit bye for now so let's see what we have this time. And sure, we have two lovely volumes in the Planet Story series. They hail from about 2005 to 2009, I seem to recall. And there's a few ones later on which aren't quite liveried in the same way. And I managed to pick these up still new. They're more or less all out of print now. I think I've got one more Lee Bracket coming, which I think is the second of the three volumes they did of the sort of scathe series which are quite easy to pick up i always hate the covers of every single one and these are nice even though the trade paperbacks i did have an a format of the dark world by henry kettner and this is one he co-wrote with cl moore of course but he was rather unattractive and wasn't that fussed on it i think it was a 60s edition and these are really nice and it's got an introduction by piers anthony which is kind of throwaway really but and i'm not normally a fan of trades but these are lovely and this is the secret of Sin Harat with an introduction by Michael Moorcock, which is a fantastic introduction. It's also got People of the Talisman in it. And yeah, this is Lee Brackett. And this is the first of the, I believe, I think it's the first of the John Stark books. And I'm trying to think what it's called in other editions because there's a variant title I can't recall. So I'll pop that in the subtitles below. But yeah, very nice indeed. And as I say, the introduction is great. I do wish we'd see more bracket reissues. The problem with authors of this vintage now is often they've gone out to copyright or they've been licensed to print on demand publishers. And you'll see on Matt Defoe's channel, because he, he's had a bit of a bracket binge, he's bought some of the laminated boards, hardcovers, and they're quite nice, but they just don't have the period feel, but maybe I'll crack and get some of them. So that's a bit of cutting and more and bracket there. Now a couple of B format paperbacks. And I'm in quite a utopian mode at the moment. I'm thinking about doing some more videos about utopias on the channel. I know I've mentioned this already. And on the left there, you see Oxford World's Classics, Three Early Modern Utopias, featuring Thomas More's Utopia, which I've read and have another edition of. Then there's The New Atlantis by Francis Bacon, which is probably the most science fictional one of the sort of early pre 19th century utopias and also the Isle of the Pines, which is the one I bought this for because that's quite obscure and very beautiful. I think you'd agree. And Isle of the Pines is by Henry Neville. And it's the one I know the least about. I have read a bit about it, so I'm going to give that a crack and maybe I'll review that soon and talk about utopias in a more general way. 
Next to that is the new Penguin B format reissue of Kobo Abe's The Ark Sakura. Now only in 2020 they issued this A format edition in Penguin Classic Science Fiction which is very very nice and you notice the size difference and Penguin have just started this new series of Japanese classics and so far they've only done four and I think there's eight listed and it includes this one which of course is his SF novel. It's not his most famous SF novel, that's Inter Ice Age 4, which nobody seems to want to reassume. And I will review this on the channel soon because it is very interesting. But it was so beautiful I couldn't resist picking it up. They've also done Frolic of the Beast by Yukio Mishima and they've done the Lafcadio Hearn Ghost Stories, which is normally a black penguin classic from the USA. But very attractive, I think you'll agree. And this is the one about the giant toilet, amongst other things. This is a book I read, gosh, it must be 30, 35 years. It's probably more like 35 years ago. And this is The Hawkline Monster by Richard Brautigan, a Gothic Western, which has sort of resonances with Frankenstein in a sort of mild way. And Brautigan is sort of an interesting figure. I found him kind of irritating at the time. He was found dead at the age of 49, and he had some whiskey and a gun beside him. And he wrote these very short, quirky sort of postmodern fabulous books and this is about somebody who wanders into the wrong whorehouse and it says and she's looking for somebody to kill a monster which lives in a cave underneath her house and it is a strange book but it's a long time since i've read it so i didn't say too much about it because i got it so i can reissue it and i do like the canon series and of all the books of his which were out there and i guess i could have read when i hadn't read before i was drawn back to this one so i will let you know what i think but that's the Hawkline monster. I read something recently, an introduction by Neil Gaiman to something where he said that he read this simply because it had monster in the title when he was young. And I can't think what else he was referring to, but I'd rather read an introduction by Neil Gaiman and forget it than actually read one of his books, I'll be honest. Completing today's look at recent acquisitions is this lovely first edition copy of Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. One of the youngest ever winners of the Nobel Prize for Literature. This is a book I've read probably at least three times I recall and I'm going to read it again and I picked this up from White Horse Books in Marlborough which is a new bookshop but they do have a section of first and they have some nice stuff and it was um, 40 pounds and that's not bad it's in really, really great nick and it's a first printing first edition and I recall when this came up there was a slip case signed limited and I thought am I going to go for this or not and I wasn't certain and I didn't and then I remember reading this and that would have been around about 2007 2008 and I was traveling over to Swindon to give a lecture on SF to tie in with my first book so it must have been 2006 maybe and I didn't want to go because I was reading this and it was so good. And of course, this is a book set in an alternate Britain with cloning technology. And in lots of ways, in terms of the SF content, you could just take it apart. Um, but it's the writing's amazing. I do like the yellow end papers. And, you know, his prose is just so beautiful. And even something like The Remains of the Day, I just absolutely love. And um, he is somebody who I want to read The Unconsoled. I've read three of his books and I don't have the urge very often, but when I do, I really enjoy them. And Clara and the Sun, I haven't read. I'm very leery of that because I don't think he's going to do more on AI. I think it's going to be a typical thing where somebody comes in from the mainstream and they do something in AI and they're going to come up with very pat sort of things. And that's the impression I got from what Michael at Fit to Be Read said in his disappointing SF video, which was really good. But I will tackle it sometime, purely because I do love his prose. But I'm really pleased with that because it's often bugged me that I don't have a first of that. And very beautiful, I think you'll agree. And in a super shiny glassine wrap, as you will have noticed.